All right, the picture we have here we found is a 1880s print off a tin plate. The reason we put this up is that when you look at the chuck wagon that you see here behind us and you think about the cowboys and the cooks on the trail, they really didn't spend a lot of time worrying about having everything neatly folded and put away. The chuck cook, known as Cookie, had to cook three meals a day off the back of this wagon. So they dragged the stuff out, fixed up the meal. When everybody got done eating, they threw the stuff back in the wagon and went down the trail five or six miles, however far the trail boss told them, to get ready for the next meal. And they did that three times a day. At night, the last thing that the cook would do is make sure the tongue of the wagon was pointed north so that when they got up in the morning, they knew which way to take off and start heading. But the thing that I like about this picture is not only that it's authentic and uh, original from the period, but it also gives you a good indication of the stuff that's in the chuck box, how the chuck box was set up, but more importantly, just how rough it was moving down the trail with a chuck wagon. For the uh, young kids, as well as the old kids, we set up this side of the board and what we have here is that this is the amount of cattle that were trailed out of Texas from about 1867 as you can see through 1879. And the numbers are pretty impressive, but if you compare it to the number of cattle that are processed in this country every day and annually, you see how it pales in comparison to the number and the millions that we put out this this year and every year. The other picture that I enjoy is this picture here that we found and this shows how the cattle drive would look going down the trail. The idea of the chuck wagon and the trail boss out front is pretty accurate because the trail boss would send the chuck wagon ahead usually four, five, six miles however far they wanted to go that day. He'd set up for the next camp. The other thing is you see how the riders were set up with point, swing, flank, and of course the people on the drag were your least experienced uh, riders because they were the ones that had to eat trail dust all day. You also had out here a wrangler who handled the remuda and that's relevant because these guys were spending 16 hours or more in the saddle every day so it would not be unusual for a cowboy to go through one and sometimes two or three horses that they'd switch out. The wrangler's job was to keep the remuda moving with the herd and if a cowboy needed to switch out a horse He'd go in, pick out the horse they asked for, rope him, bring him out, and the cowboy would change out horses. You gotta figure they were on the trail for about three months, so that's a lot of riding for their, even a healthy, well-conditioned horse. The other thing I showed here is that on this map, you can see why they had a need to bring the herds from Texas up to Kansas. When you look at the geography, you can see the rails headed to Kansas and that's about where they ended in the 1865 era. Right after the Civil War with the influx of people available to work these cattle drives they rounded up all these stray longhorns or stole them out of Mexico, brought them up and they would bring them only as far as necessary to get them to the railhead so they could be loaded on rail cars and shipped back east to where the majority of the population is. Now as it uh, transgressed or progressed along, you could see that they moved farther west. Part of that was because of the way the rail system was set up. The other part is the cowboys and the cattle drives were getting run out of areas because farmers were coming in. They were growing crops. They didn't want their cattle commingling with the longhorns, which had a uh, Texas tick that could cause Texas fever to the domesticated cattle. Also, they had their uh, fields set up. A lot of them were farmers. They didn't want the cattle coming in. And at the end of the day, they were coming in and celebrating and sometimes tearing up the town. So as time went on, they moved farther to the west, ending up probably in about Dodge City as one of the last places. And that worked out well because it was about that time, around 1890, that the railroad started going farther to the southwest and it kind of eliminated the need to drive cattle three months to the uh, north. So it was a great experience for these men. For a dollar a day, they spent 16 to 20 hours working, and they did it all to drive these cattle to a railhead to ship them back to the people who wanted the beef back east.